So where a STD really thread really shines is for what I call an attached thread. That is one that runs pretty much independently. Um, examples of that would be timers that need to uh, fire on a periodic, you know, a periodic cadence, doing something nice. Network I/O threads to talk to other processes, even interacting with hardware interrupts, and the actor model um, is pretty much built around this. So not long after Rust 1.0 came out, and enough of us uh, whined about uh, the difficulties of accessing um, local scope variables, uh, scoped threads were added to the standard library. Uh, we're going to have a look at how to use these. Um, they make it much easier to access local data because the lifetime is guaranteed. Uh, it is absolutely guaranteed that whatever threads you create in a scope will uh, terminate at the end of that scope. Uh, joining is automatic unless you actually want to return data, in which case you still need to read the join handles. Um, this is perfect for those times where you want where you have a big batch of data. You want to spawn off a bunch of threads, process really hard, squeeze the results back to one place. Very, very common pattern, particularly if you're doing anything um, in the scientific or numeric world. Now, the downside is that this is more verbose, and uh, um, I have fallen afoul of this one. Don't forget to use the scopes that you created. Uh, threaded scopes originate in the Rayon library, which we're going to be talking about in a moment. OK, so with a threaded scope, you'll notice this is pretty much the same program. We've got our atomic counter, just like we did before. But instead of spawning with std thread, we're calling thread scope. And it passes you, it expects a closure, which will take one, receive one parameter, the scope. And when you spawn, you don't use thread spawn, you use scope spawn, because you're telling that scope, spawn the thread within your scope. And now we can safely access the shared variable because the lifetime of the program is now absolutely deterministic and the Rust, uh, the Rust library, you know, the Rust, sorry, the Rust compiler can absolutely be sure that none of these threads will outlive the scope. The, um, all of this code is actually in the, <clears throat> um, in the uh, ultimate Rust class that I teach also. This is great in terms of giving you a nice, easy way to break down, break up large amounts of data when you need to, process it all at once without jumping through hoops, without having to clone parts of it, generally make a mess. Rust's giving you the tools you need to, to easily uh, divide it up into chunks. There's even a chunks folder uh, function if you're working on a vector, work on it in, work on it in pieces divided between your CPUs, and be 100% sure that you're not going to seg fault at the very end of your program mysteriously because your thread outlived your main thread. Lastly, on this section, let's talk about Rayon. So Rayon is almost as old as Rust. If any of you have used Intel's threaded building blocks for C++, that was a lot of the inspiration for it. It's a nice C++ library to make threads a little less painful to use. So the upsides of Rayon is that it's really, really easy in most cases. Performance is fantastic. And if you have an algorithm that readily divides up to be parallelizable, Rayon can often allow you to write parallel code um, with very little effort. Uh, the downside is that you don't have as much control over the process. So if you're writing something really timing sensitive, really complicated, that has to interact with lots of other moving parts, Rayon may not be for you, but a lot of the time Rayon really is easy mode. So what does it do? By default, Rayon uh, will spawn one thread per available CPU core the first time you call it. These sit idle until there's work to do. And uh, we'll talk about the magic for how to do that yourself um, a little later. Rayon doesn't think of um, things to do as threads, it thinks of them as tasks. So in this respect, it's sort of a halfway house between async and threads. And a lot of the time, um, if you're doing a computational program, but async is the log logical way to think about it, Rayon is the good bridge between the two points. Uh, Roland asked if we can prefer threads over async in Rust. I'll talk about that in detail at the end, but uh, Rayon really does provide a good halfway house between the two. Um, I personally recommend async for really high performance input output. If you're a network bound, your program spends a lot of time waiting on other things like databases, waiting for the network. Um, I recommend threads when computation speed is your primary is your primary issue. And don't forget, you can always mix the two together. Okay, so where does Rayon really shines making life easy? 
Uh, it's great for, I have this one calculation, I need to go faster. Rayon really doesn't shine if you've already got a complicated threading system, because now you've just added a thread pool on top of what you already have. So if you wanted to parallelize almost anything with Rayon, it's really simple. We've got a function here that um, does the same counting as we had before. I may, um, went ahead and put it into our range because Rayon by default likes to operate on iterators. You'll find lots of Rust code operates um, on an iterator, um, you know, iterate, map, reduce, map, fold, map, sum, map for each. Um, Rayon is built around that model. So we make a nice little vector, zero to eight, um, iterate through them, map the results of counter, add them together. So here's the magic. We've included the Rayon prelude. We've replaced I-T-E-R, iter, with parallel iterator, P-A-R-I-T-E-R. Rayon does all the magic for you. As soon as it hits that parallel iterator, if it hasn't already made it, it creates your thread pool. It divides your uh, incoming range up equally between into tasks, which are then fed into the thread pool. The thread pool already has work stealing built right in. So if one item is taking uh, longer and other threads are starving for work, it will automatically move pending jobs over, it can do the summing. And so by by adding one use command and changing ITER to parallel iterator, you have multi-threaded your program. This works with the vast majority of iterator functions, folding for each, um, mapping large amounts of data and similar. And Rayon retains all of Rust's safety. So in answer to, uh, I, I apologize for not knowing how to say your name, uh, Prabhu Dech, um, you still can't share a mutex variable in Rayon. Um, yes, you can. It's working with a, uh, um, it's working with a, within the scoped threads, uh, it's guaranteed to return back. So if you need to refer to, uh, if you want read only access, you don't need a mutex, it can, ref it can access something with the same scope capture rules. If you wrap it in a mutex, you can work with it just like you would any other um, shared protected variable. So Rayon is easy mode. I will give you a quick word of warning. I was talking to someone the other day who uh, made use of Rayon's wonderful parallel sort feature and his program slowed way down. Uh, the reason for that is that the um, single threaded sort in Rust is uh, really mind bogglingly fast. Um, he was sorting a million 64 bit integers and uh, the act of sorting them in one in one thread was actually faster than the time it takes to uh, divide the data up, send it to multiple threads, have them sort it and reassemble it. So always make sure that you have enough work to do to justify your threads because you can actually slow your program down otherwise. Okay, this is the um, threading strategies section. Use STD thread when you want to build complex architectures where you're detaching what are basically, um, what are basically independent jobs. Use scoped threads when you've got some data, you want to divide it up into a workload that gets um, requires shared access to it, but you don't want to copy it, send it everywhere. Combine that, get an answer. Use Rayon if threads aren't really the focus of your program, but you have tasks that you need to speed up and that task lends itself to being spread across CPUs. Rayon is right there to help you. That's what it's for. Rayon is easy mode, but nobody's going to complain if you sped your program up by a factor of 30 or 40, um, that it was easy. They're going to say, nope, that was, um, how on earth did you do that with two lines of code and you come out looking great. So if it's not going to interfere with what you're doing, have a look and see if Rayon can solve your problem.